Andy, the question about whether we can build conscious robots is, seems to have a very sharp dividing line between people. Uh, uh, e either it's incredibly obvious that we can or incredibly obvious that it's uh, in principle impossible. Um, and I guess it, it depends on what you think consciousness is, but h h how would you begin to analyze that question? Yeah, I suppose w w one place to start is what kind of thing you think we are. So I think if you think that what a person is, is a person is an animal, then you're, you're going to be driven in the direction of thinking that it's going to be very, very hard, perhaps impossible, to build something like this out of parts that don't have the sort of basic stuff you expect of a, a biological system. I think it could turn out to be true that you can only build conscious systems out of biological parts, but if so, that would be because of something functional about those parts. It would turn out to be some property that biological stuff has in terms of the responses that it can bring about, the behaviours it can control, that somehow makes it the case that other stuff can't do it. I don't really see that myself. I don't see there's any evidence for that right now. So because of that, of course, I have to end up being in the camp of people that think that conscious robots probably aren't going to happen in my lifetime. Um, but there's nothing in principle impossible about them, perhaps nothing even especially difficult. I think the, I think the main problem facing us right now with, with most of these attempts is that we don't know how to build the right knowledge in at the start. So I don't think it's about the stuff. I think it's about getting the kind of knowledge base right. Well, in cer certainly in terms of, of what the robot or the computer would uh, do, in term that depends on the knowledge base, but the fundamental element is not the responses or the outputs of the algorithms, however complex, but, but the question is, you know, is there an internal um, movie going on in, yeah. in whatever we're saying is, because con that's the... That's what we're saying. We're not saying that the robot is uh, is going to be smarter than us or able to, uh, you know, okay. beat uh, a chess or go champions because we know they can. Uh, so they're smarter. If that's the way we use it. The question is, is 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 will there exist this inner um, m movie that suddenly will turn on at some point? Yeah. So I think the the picture of the inner movie is a it's a difficult picture here because it's not quite clear what's in that inner movie. So if you think about a very simple creature, like um, yeah, it so happens that I have stick insects. They're probably amongst the most, you know, the simplest creatures that, uh, that you could keep as a pet. And I, I'm not sure that there's anything it's like to be a stick insect. But if there is anything it's like to be a stick insect, it's something fairly blunt. You know, perhaps they know something about the orientation, feel something about the orientation of themselves in space, mm -hmm. feel a little something about the proximity of something edible. Um, so is that an inner movie? I think it's a kind of very, very thin yeah, yeah. inner movie. And then creatures like us have this really, really thick inner movie. Um, if we were to build little robots of the sophistication of a stick insect, then I would have to say that those little robots had as much inner movie going on as a stick insect does. I don't think there's any room for uh, wiggling around there. Basically, um, s you know, fix the sort of fix the information sources that you're integrating, fix what they enable you to perceive in the world and to do in terms of actions in the world. And when that all comes together, then you must have fixed the content of the inner movie. So if you or someone that likes zombies then comes to me and says, yeah, but maybe you fixed all that and you didn't get an inner movie at all. Mm. You know, you've just got a zombie stick insect. It's not mm. even got as much inner movie as a real <laughs> stick insect. I would say, well, um, I don't see, see what should push me in that direction. Certainly, if you're a physicalist and uh, believe in naturalism, that the only things real are physical, uh, you would have to go in exactly what you said, because everything that creates the consciousness, whether it's a stick insect in a very small scale or an us in a very rich scale, are derived from physical yeah. stuff. And I even think the distinction between a biological uh, entity that would only maintain consciousness and a non-biological that couldn't because there's some special thing about biology, if that's all physical, there's no vitalism involved, yeah. th th that has to be expressed in something yeah, physical. Exactly. And, 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 yeah. and eventually that could be discovered. Yeah. And so that would push in, yeah. in that direction. But yet many of your colleagues mm -hmm. don't agree. 
I mean, that they say that it's uh, that it it may be impossible. Uh, so, what are the arguments on the other side that people would say that you, you would that if you build a robot, yeah. it will say it's conscious, but it's really not? I suppose in in the philosophical literature, at least, um, the main argument there would be a sort of Searle kind of story. Um, so John Searle has famously defended the idea that you could repeat the sort of behavioral patterns, bring a, them about, integrating the right kinds of information. Mm -hmm. So it's not just getting the behavior right, it's right, sort of right. somehow bringing it about in a simulation of the right way. And so mm -hmm. they want to say, look, just simulate in the right way won't necessarily bring consciousness about or, you know, thin kinds of movie about. And I think it depends in the end whether you think that the conscious mind is an informational phenomenon or not. Um, so I think someone like John Searle thinks it's not. It's not informational. It's somehow, it's almost like a secretion. It's almost like something that biological <laughs> stuff gets <laughs> to do. And if you somehow bring all the right information together, but you're not built of the right stuff, you just don't secrete it. Um, but. I mean, you're asking me to defend a position here <laughs> It's so far from what I believe that mm. I fear I won't do them justice. <laughs> um, so there'll be a time for sure, uh, even though I am not sure of this question, but I am sure there'll become a time when whatever entity, a computer or a robot looks like us or looks like a machine, whatever, will claim it's conscious, yeah. and no question you could ask it can discern the difference that any Turing test, so-called, it would pass. I mean, that seems to be absolutely true. But in, in principle, it would seem impossible that you can ever uh, independently confirm that because first-person consciousness doesn't seem like something that is independently confirmable. But the tricky thing there is that then I'm in the same kind of position with respect to your consciousness. Yeah, yeah of course. Of so, course. you know, um, I believe that I have as, as good reason to think you're conscious as I have reason to think anything else about the world. So whatever little room for doubt remains, I think it's just the room for doubt that always remains. When we've told the best stories we can tell, um, brought to bear the best picture of how the universe operates that we can bring to bear, there's always gonna be room for things to actually be different to that. Um, so I think there is a very, very slim <laughs> possibility that you're not conscious, yeah. and there will be a very slim possibility that that robot's not conscious, but it will be the same slim possibility, and it's not one that I think we can afford to worry about, because there's no way to get rid of it.